Hello everybody. Welcome to our second mini lecture on local rings. Let me first remind you what the definition of a local ring was. A local ring is a ring that has a unique maximal ideal. And what you see here, this text I've written, this is what we have written in the first mini lecture. So we have proven that the ring R is a local ring, so it has a unique maximal ideal if and only if every element of the complement of the maximal ideal, so the maximal ideal was called m, and r minus m then denotes the complement of this maximal ideal, if and only if every element of the complement of the maximal ideal is a unit. And you can either read through the proof here or you can uh, watch the first mini lecture in case you haven't done this. So what we are going to do now in this second mini lecture is uh, we are going to prove yet another equivalent condition for a ring to be a local ring. And this is the following. So R is local if and only if M is maximal. And every element of the form um, one plus a, where a is in M is is a unit, right? So this is the statement. I'm gonna read it again to you since my handwriting on the screen again is terrible. So R is local if and only f uh, m, which is our ideal, if and only m is maximal, and every element on of the form. 1 plus a, um, where a is an element of m, is a unit. Let us prove this statement. We are first going to do this direction. So we are first going to assume that r is local. So let r be local. And remember, this means that R has a unique maximal ideal, and we call this maximal ideal M. So let R be local with max ideal M. Then, um, then look at elements of this form. Um, so how shall we write this? Um, so if you look at elements of this form, one plus A, where, as we have said in the statement, um, where A is an element of M, um, these, el these elements of this form uh, cannot be in cannot be elements of M, um, since yeah, since if one plus a was in M, you would have that, you would have the implication that one uh, would have to be in M. Right? Um, so what, so what I mean is, um, assume that 1 plus a is an m. So let's make a little calculation here. If 1 plus a is in m, and of course a is in m, then you can add minus a, and you get 1 plus a plus minus a, which is of course 0 here. So you get that 1 is an m. And 
M is a maximal ideal, which in which, uh, which in particular means it is a proper ideal, so it cannot contain A. So you see that. Um, so let's erase this stupid little calculation. But um, you see that uh, elements of this form, one plus A, uh, where A is an M, cannot be elements of M, and uh, thus you see that they have to be in the complement of M. And this, by the second part uh, of our statement in the first lemma, implies that these elements are units. So this is so these elements, I mean, again, I mean these ones these elements um, are units by lemma one since they are in the complement of M. So this concludes the first part of the proof, of the proof where we of this direction here from r is local to m is maxima and every element and so on. So uh, let's now look at the other direction where we assume that m is maximal and every element of the form 1 plus a uh, for a in m is a unit and we want to conclude that r is local. So let's make some space here. And uh, fortunately, this is also uh, not too hard to show because um, let's pick let's pick x, which is not an element of M, and then uh, x plus M. So x plus this maximal ideal M generates. the unit ideal right because x is not in m and m is by assumption maximal so this means that we can write one in the form uh, some a in r times x minus some m. So this m is, well, it's an element of the uh, maximal ideal m. And so let's bring ax to the other side, and then we, then we have ax is um, m plus 1. And our assumption, remember, was that, let me scroll up for you to, to show you, our assumption was that uh, these elements of this form, 1 plus, uh, one plus a, um, where a is an m, so that this is here the case, um, that these are units. So our conclusion at this point is that ax is a unit. And of course, this also means that x is a unit. And now if you, if we zoom out a little bit, uh, you see what we have done. We have, we have shown that the assumption that uh, x is not an M led us to the conclusion that x is a unit. And by our first lemma, this is uh, this is equivalent to saying that R is a local ring. So in effect, we have now shown that uh, R is a local ring, and this concludes the proof of the second lemma. So in the next lecture, we are going to continue studying local rings. So stay tuned for more and thank you for watching.